Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to your second lesson in physics. Uh, today I'm just going to talk about um, two things before we get into the actual problem. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about is standard units um, that we're going to be using for all of our equations and conversions and stuff. And then the second thing I'm going to talk about is significant uh, figures. And so these are just general things that you're going to be using a lot in physics. Some professors are real sticklers. Um, or like you know the real real sticklers on on um, significant figures when you turn in your questions and such. First, I want to talk about the standard units that we're going to be using for most of our formulas and equations and uh, our problems. Physics mainly uses the metric system, so we're going to be dealing with like centimeters, kilometers, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and I'll just kind of explain what the standard units are, what what we're trying to figure out. And first I'm just going to give you a formula. Um, this is just force equals mass times acceleration. This will uh, show you a good reason why we want to use the standard measurements um, or the standard units basically. And so here are some of the standard units. I'll put all of them below if I miss a few, but I'm just going to cover the basic ones. When we're dealing with weight, we want to use kilometer or I'm sorry, kilograms. So that's going to be our standard unit that we're going to use for weight. You want to convert everything into kilograms, not grams, not all this other stuff, um, but just kilograms. And for time, we're going to use seconds. For uh, distance, we're going to use meters. For um, for like volume and you know when we're involving liquids, we're going to use liters. Um, well, I guess not all volume, but we're going to use liters. And here are just some of the basic ones. Um, like I said, I'm going to list some more in below uh, when you, when you're using different kind of kind of equations and such. All right, I just rewrote the formula for finding out what force is, which is mass times acceleration. I just kind of want to go over um, why the standard units are so important because basically force is measured in newtons, and we'll get to this later when we're learning about about force. But just remember, it's measured in newtons just for the sake of this uh, example. So this is a unit as well, um, a standard unit that we use for force. And for mass, like we said, it's measured in kilograms. And for acceleration, it's measured in um, distance, which would be in meters over seconds squared. And we'll get to how, how you find that out and why it's measured in that um, later when we get into force and acceleration and velocity and all that good stuff. I just want to show you guys that the unit of a newton is equal to kilogram meters over seconds squared. So anytime you use a newton you're expecting it to be in this formula. Um, anytime we find a force it will be measured in newtons so we can carry that down uh, for whatever equation needs to do with force. But let's say when you uh, measure something and you think the mass is in grams and you just say meters over seconds squared and then later you figure out what the answer is like 10 gram meters over seconds squared and like you just won't even think about it and you're just going to change this to newtons because you know you use mass times ex acceleration and you just call it newtons but this is not going to be 10 newtons this is going to be something completely different because we use grams instead of kilograms so that's one of the reasons why you want to use the standard units of measurement um, just for filtering through different equations throughout your problem. Oh, I guess Drunk Fred wants to kind of explain it a different way. Apparently I didn't do it in an easy enough fashion. but Let's say you're trying to go out and get all drunk, right? And we know that getting drunk is equal to eight shots of, eight shots of tequila and one beer, right? So... Let's say you want to get drunk and you aren't you don't know your standard units of measurement and so you plug in some equation that you think is getting drunk but you forgot this, what this unit was on the tequila. So you're going to say eight eight uh, pints of tequila plus one beer. Now, you think you're getting drunk because that's what the formula you think is doing, right? But what this actually is is making you think you died and went to hell. But what actually happened was you had passed out in an alleyway in Tallahassee or Tijuana and a couple of gay prostitutes pick you up and bring you back to their pimp's motel 
and you wake up there the next day, 7 p.m., the pimp is slapping you, say you own $100, and you have no idea what the frank's going on because you're drunk as a donkey, so you try and get out of there, but you have quadruple vision, and he sends his monkey minions to bite on your ankles, and you're just kicking them and trying to get out of there, and you just... Anyway... Anyways, the moral of the story is you want to get your standard units of measurement up, otherwise everything's all messed up for all your other equations in life. The other thing I want to talk about is significant figures or significant numbers, and you're going to want to use this every time you do an equation. Uh, some This is something some professors won't really care about, but others will, and definitely it's pretty important here. So let's take an example. Um, Right here, I'm just gonna start right real quick. We're gonna say we have two objects and they have these masses. And we're gonna add those masses together and we wanna find the total mass. So, you know, this is pretty easy. It's just gonna be 1.831, just simple math. But you turn this in and this is gonna be kilograms because they're both kilograms. And you're gonna turn this in and some professors will be like, no, that is not right. And why? Because when you look at the significant figures, significant figures say how accurate we are being with our answer. Um, and what is a significant figure? Well, right here, each of these numbers is a significant figure. We have one, two, three, four significant figures, but here we only have two significant figures. You want your, your resultant to have the same amount of significant figures as the lowest amount of significant numbers in one of your variables. So this variable obviously has only two significant numbers, so our answer will have to end up being just 1.8. So now this is an official answer. It's 1.8 has two significant figures just like what we'd have in our uh, variables. So that's just a that's an overview on significant figures, and I just wanted to show you how you can determine how many significant figures there is in your variables. So I wrote out a few equations. Just want to talk through them. First, one that's just one uh, one significant figure. Pretty simple. But if you want your answer to be more accurate, you're going to have to make your variables more accurate. So you want this to be two, two significant figures, so we're just going to add a point zero, and now it's two significant figures. Sorry, I'm kind of going out of order here. But again, this will be four significant figures. But the tricky ones are down here, because zeros are kind of a strange property. Anything after the decimal place to your first number, if those are all zeros, it's going to be, we aren't going to include those in our significant number. So this one is actually only going to be one significant number in our variable. And same with the 100. This is, there's no decimal here, so we're only going to include this because we don't know how accurate these are. So this is going to be one variable, as or one significant number as well. And an easy way to change this is we could just add a point zero, and now it will include everything, um, all of those numbers as significant numbers, and there will be four significant numbers. As well as right here, for example, if this was 1.001, .001, that would also have four significant numbers now, and those zeros would be included. Again, you just add a zero, and all those other zeros become included. And so I just want to touch on that because that's pretty important and some professors will get not give you credit for your answers if you don't have the right amount of significant figures. Yeah, I'm using a sock, so high class production here.